Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. So this particular video is focusing on exactly how we can break down circuits and use what we've kind of talked about the past couple of lessons, the idea of Ohm's law, the idea of how current and voltage kind of interact in circuits. And we can use all this together to analyze what's going on in a circuit, all right? So the first piece of this, all right, is just this idea that I have this, I have this series circuit set up here. And of course we know it's a series circuit because the idea that there's only one loop going on. And I have three resistors in series. You might've seen this diagram before. It might look familiar because we've already used it once. Now, before we talk about how to break it down, I want to go into a bit more detail about the symbols you see in circuit diagrams, all right? And these symbols are specifically important if you are going into electrical engineering, if you're working with electricians, knowing what's on a circuit diagram and the symbols, it's rather important to understanding what's going on, all right? Now for us, we only have four different pieces of circuits that we care about. There are much more pieces than that, but there's only four that really matter to us. And that's a battery, a resistor, a light bulb, and a switch, okay? Now, a battery has a very specific symbol, and it can look a little bit different depending on what's going on, but usually the battery circuit symbol is always the same thing. And it's going to be in a circuit, you'll see there is a line and a shorter line like this. And usually you'll see something leaving from it, but basically it's gonna be the battery symbol is always gonna be a long line and a short line, okay? And sometimes you might have a two of them next to each other like this diagram does, Really, it's up to the kind of the preference of whoever's drawing it, but in all cases, that tells you that there's some sort of battery or voltage source here, okay? Now, the next piece is going to be, I'm gonna get through those little lines just so that they don't get confusing. Or not, okay. The next piece is a resistor, okay? Now, a resistor, as you can kind of see from the diagram, is literally drawn by just drawing a little zigzag, okay? That represents a resistor, all right? And that is literally anything that provides some sort of resistance to the circuit. And honestly, that can be the most simple thing in the world. That can be literally a piece of wire that's thinner than the other pieces of wire. That can be something as complex as some sort of device that uses electrical power. It's really up to, it really kind of is up to you on all that, all right? Now, and I apologize, I just wanna fix the battery logo. The third piece, the light bulb, all right? A light bulb, honestly, is just a very specific type of resistor, but because it is so useful to kind of planning purposes and useful for circuits in general, it has its own symbol. And a light bulb symbol, usually for our purposes, is going to be a circle with an X through it, all right? And then the fourth piece, the switch, all right? All switches, honestly, when you draw the symbol, is basically you draw an open switch. So if I had a wire, the switch symbol would look like this. And that was a really great, well done switch symbol. Um, let me try a little more detail. Basically it looks something like this, okay? And you leave it open, that way you know very clearly it is a switch. So, this is the four circuit symbols that we have in circuits. Battery, resistor, light bulb, and switch. Whenever you are setting up a circuit and you draw the circuit diagram, those symbols will represent what you are trying to let an electrician, an engineer, whoever is creating the circuit, what pieces you need for it, all right? Now, with that being said, our goal today is that we are going to work on how we can actually analyze complex circuits. And in this particular case, we wanna figure out how much power this circuit uses in total, all right? That's gonna be our most important thing right now, how much power does it use in total? And how much power does each piece of the circuit use as well, okay? Now, we brought up the term electrical power a couple of times in previous videos, but we never actually defined the formula. For us, the formula for electrical power is going to be that the power, that electrical power is dependent on the current times the voltage, all right? P equals IV. And actually, you can use Ohm's law to also write out the other relationship. So one of them is P equals IV. Using Ohm's law, we can actually get rid of the voltage component. And actually the electrical power is can be I squared, the current squared divided by the resistance. All right. And then also it can be, I just wanna to think to make sure V equals I R. Actually, I'm sorry, that. <laughs> it 
this should be i squared times r is the power and then it's going to be the voltage squared divided by the resistance okay three different ways of calculating the same thing literally all it's calculating is how much power is being used to get the electron from one side of the resistor to the other okay and basically that is literally measuring how much energy is being deposited in a certain amount of time so for circuits they have kind of more, when you get to the more complex setups, it can be a little difficult to kind of determine how you want to break it down. So for us, in order to organize our thoughts and kind of organize how we want to calculate different equipment or different, I guess, quantities, I should say, for a circuit, we use something referred to as a VIRP chart or a verb chart, however you want to call it. All a verb chart does is it's similar. It's like a kinematics chart. It's a place where we organize our thoughts and the information that we know. All right. Now, a vert chart starts by drawing kind of the first row. And the first row is just going to be kind of identifying what part of the circuit you're looking at because the vert chart lets you look at every little piece. And then you're doing the four physical quantities we care about. So voltage is the V. I represents the current flowing through a piece. R for resistance and P for power. All right? Now, the unit, just a heads up, unit for power, it's just like it was when we talked about energy. It is still the watt. Now, what we do is we fill out this chart. And once this whole table is done, it'll tell us everything we need to know. It'll tell us how much current is going through each piece of the circuit. It might tell us how much voltage is dropped at each part of the circuit. It'll tell us how much power is being used in each part of the circuit. All right. So just like we do with kinematics, we start with the verb chart by literally looking at what the problem tells us and plugging it into the chart. All right. So we start by looking at our circuit. Now, our circuit has three resistors. So we're going to start, and it literally tells me the resistance. It also tells me the voltage of the battery, which is probably going to be the voltage of the whole circuit in general. So you'll notice I start by doing the part of the circuit. I have the three resistors in series, the three, really the three resistors in the circuit. And then I write the word total as well. Okay. Because what we do, we do a VIRP chart, is we actually try and simplify the circuit as much as possible to help us figure out what's going on. And we can use that to kind of break down other parts of the circuit. So with that being said, I want you to pause the video for a sec. I want you to fill in this chart. What are some things we already know? All right, just pause the video for a sec. Fill in what we already know. All right, so hopefully looking at the table already, you can see that we know three things. We know the resistance is the, the three resistors. So we can fill that in. So R1. Is 100 ohms, and I'm not going to leave. I'm going to leave the unit off just because I don't have a ton of space. R2, 300, and then R3 is 500, or excuse me, 50. My apologies. Now, because these three things are in series, we can actually go one step further. Because as we talked about previously, if you have resistors in series, you can combine them and say they act like one bigger resistor. So these act like the same thing as a 450 ohm resistor. So that means the total resistance of the whole circuit is actually going to be 450 ohms. Okay. Now, the only other thing that we know just by reading the problem is going to be the voltage of the total voltage of the circuit because the battery is providing the total voltage of the circuit. In this case, Total voltage is going to be nine volts. Okay. Now at this point, we'd be a little bit stuck because really we don't know much else, but what we do know is we have a couple formulas we can use to help us out. The first thing we know is that we know that voltage, current, and resistance are all related by Ohm's law. And remember there are multiple ways to write it out. The easiest way I, I like to write it is that the current is dependent on the voltage divided by the resistance. Okay. What that means is that we can use Ohm's law like a magnifying glass and we can look at each particular part of the circuit and we can figure out how much current is going through it or how much voltage is being dropped or how much resistance it has, depending on what we don't know. All right. Now, looking at all the rows, in this case, we don't know enough to solve for the other things except for the total row. If you notice in the total row, we actually know the voltage and we know the resistance which means in the total role, we can actually calculate the current going through the circuit, all right? 
And to do that, we're just going to use Ohm's law. I equals V divided by R. Plug it in your calculator. The voltage is going to be 9 volts. The resistance 450 ohms. If you throw that in your calculator, you get that the total current through this circuit is just 0.2 amps. And while that seems like kind of an inconsequential calculation, in fact, that is the key to unlocking everything in the circuit. Because this is a series circuit. And we talked about the idea with the loop rule of current, that in the same loop, the current through everything is going to be the same. Which means the total current going through the circuit is also going to be the total current going through this part of the circuit, and this part of the circuit, and this part of the circuit. So right there, because this is a series circuit, I can use that rule to actually write down the total current going through every resistor. And it has to be 0 0.02 amps because that's the total current going through the circuit, and they're all in series. And now we're in business. Because now we know two things for all of these, we can actually calculate the third. So what I want you to do, please, ladies and gentlemen, is pause the video here. I want you to fill out the rest of the chart. All right. And I want you specifically to figure out how much power each thing is using, how much power in total did it use, and see if it makes sense when you look at kind of the power usage of the three objects and the total power. All right. So pause the video here, fill in the rest of the table, and we'll come back together and talk about it. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to go through and fill out that table. Let's just kind of go through it. So I'm going to start with R1. The voltage drop for R1, you're using Ohm's law. If I know the current and the resistance, we know that V equals IR. So if you go through and use that, you can know from calculating it that in the first resistor, we drop 2 volts. Then we go to the next one, do the exact same setup. We find out it actually drops now 6 volts. And then in R3, same thing, we find it drops one volt. And we know, looking at this, immediately we can tell this makes sense because we know that the voltage drops of these three things in series have to add up to equal the total voltage. And 2, 6, 1 added together equals 9, which is exactly what we expect. All right? So we now know the voltage, the current, and the resistance of all the pieces of the circuit. So let's look at how much power is being used. Let's start with the first one. So we talked about the idea that power is just current times voltage. So Doing that calculation there, we'll get the power is 0 0.04 watts. So that's not a ton of energy, but that's still a little bit of energy dropped off there. All right. Next, we do the bigger, the biggest resistor. Voltage is six, drop is six. Current is still the same. So you get that it utilizes 0 0.12 watts here. And then our smallest resistor, it uses the least amount of power to kind of get through. Only draw, it only has 0 0.2 watts. All right. And then if you do the calculation again for the total, if you do 9 times 0 0.02, you'll get that the total power used by the circuit is 0.18 watts. And when you know it, if you add the watt power usage of the three resistors together, that's going to equal exactly 0.18 watts. So what we've done just by drawing this chart is giving us a place to organize all of our thoughts and organize kind of everything we know about circuits. All right. So with that being said, this is where this first video is going to end. The second video is going to cover the second problem. But a good rule of thumb is that if you're not sure where to start, always try to figure out the total row first and then use it to kind of look at each piece individually. All right. But you're going to find out that honestly, it's going to come down to know whatever you know the most for solving for that row first and then going from there. All right. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's where I stop for this particular video. Then the second half of this video is going to cover the second question. All right.